Hello my lovelies. I hope you've managed to have a good week wherever you are in the world. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my top five tips for sewing on a budget. Before we dive in I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for continuing to watch and share my sewing adventure with me. I've had a few new subscribers this week so I just wanted to say a huge welcome and a huge huge thank you for clicking that subscribe button. It really does mean the world to me, especially in this time when we're all locked down or living a life that's quite diminished in many ways. We don't get to share time with our loved ones or our friends especially, and some of us feel very isolated. So it's so nice to have this little group of online friends, YouTube friends, sharing this journey with me and giving such lovely feedback and inspiring me. And if I inspire you, well, that was my my whole point of doing this channel. So I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your lives to spend a few minutes with me in my little cottage by the sea where I just spend my time sewing and it's lovely to share that with you. If this is the first time that you've stumbled across Tara Dayton Atelier, a huge welcome. My name's Tara and I like to make videos about all things sewing. My particular style is vintage inspired, but I am a teacher of dressmaking and fashion and pattern cutting and all sorts. So I just like to share all of that with you. So if that's your kind of thing, if that's your cup of tea, then do please click the like, subscribe buttons, and tinkle the little bell wherever that is, I'm not really sure, to get notified. But I'm here every Thursday sharing my sewing journey with you, and it is so lovely to have you along. Now the gushing Oscar speech is over, my top five tips for sewing on a budget. Starting with number one, charity shops. Charity shops or thrift shops as they're known in other countries or consignment stores are literally one of my favourite things to do. I'm really feeling the lack of going on the hunt and getting into magpie mode and really rooting out all those treasures. But they're fabulous for fabrics and, you know, sewing notions, old patterns for whether it's dressmaking or knitting or other crafts. You can find all sorts of resources and actually most of the things that I show you that are vintage are things that I have found on my travels over the years in charity shops or people have found them in charity shops for me. So if rooting about in, in dirty tat as one person likened charity shopping to, if that's not your cup of tea and you know people who really love going on a charity shop or a thrift shop, then, you know, just ask, just say, if you see anything, you know, sewing related that, you know, you don't mind picking up for me, I'll give you some money, I'll, I'll buy you a coffee or a cup of tea and a piece of cake at some point as a thank you. It's a really, really good way of adding to your collection of sewing paraphernalia and, you never know what you're going to find. So charity shop, definitely number one, my favorite thing to do. And I cannot wait until they reopen. I donate everything and anything um, that I'm not using anymore. So I donate all my scraps to a local school and uh, because they always need resources, the design and technology departments, textile departments always need resources and any old clothes, etc. to to charities, local charities that I believe in, and that's a little way of, of putting something back. So by buying from the charity shops, you're being sustainable, you're also doing something good for the world, which I am all for. Make the world a better place one stitch at a time is my personal motto, and you um, find treasure along the way. Number two, freebies. Who doesn't love a freebie? There are absolutely loads of online resources and I'm going to share a few with you. So the first, I'm looking at my notes, sorry. So the first um, free online resource that is an absolute Aladdin's cave full of brilliant resources is Pinterest. 
Most of us have a Pinterest addiction. I most certainly do. I'm linking a, a specific board down below with you. It's my atelier board. I have two atelier boards. I have my Tara Dayton atelier, which is all my stuff. And then I have an atelier board, which is just general sewing, tutorials, free stuff, um, anything really that is relevant to teaching, learning, dressmaking, sewing. So that's a brilliant, brilliant free resource that is available to you. Related to that, here on YouTube, YouTube is a, a wonderland of free tutorials, classes, lessons, and so many inspiring people sewing and crafting. You can't go out to classes and lessons and so on. And I have a great time watching YouTubers sharing their knowledge and inspiration with me. So that's another great, great place for free resources. I also would recommend museum archives and museum collections. The Victoria and Albert Museum has some wonderful free knitting patterns, some free dressmaking patterns. They have currently got some free Mary Quant dresses. So if the 60s is your vibe, then it's well worth having a little look at these. You can download the patterns for free and print them out at home if you want, or you can get them printed at an online printer. So that's a brilliant one. I've downloaded a few, a few of the knitting patterns and there are lots of other museums that hold all sorts of information. So just go and have a little look. Go on to the website and then type in free, free resources and you find all sorts of things. Especially useful at the moment if you're having to do some homeschooling and you're you know, looking for some resources for your kids. A really good online resource for free dressmaking patterns is Mood Society. Their catalogue of free patterns is incredible. I've downloaded a couple and they are really, um, you know, really lovely, very fashion forward, but there are some there that with, you know, depending on the fabrics that you choose, you can make them your own style, whatever that is. And there's some lovely tutorials, um, you know, how to hack patterns and so on. So I thoroughly recommend that. My third tip for sewing on a budget is to swap. I know that swishing parties where you swap items of clothing have been a really big thing and are lots of fun. So there's no reason why you couldn't do a similar thing with your dressmaking items. My fourth tip for sewing on a budget, really really simple one, but it's to reuse. Reuse your patterns as often as you can, as much as you can. Learn how to adapt them, learn how to hack them, to develop them on. When you see what's on the catwalk or in the shops or even, you know, vintage pictures and so on, there's only really a certain amount of of shapes you know a pencil skirt for example is a pencil skirt but by learning how to adapt it you can create all sorts of other skirt designs and styles for your wardrobe so I think I tend to do this anyway because once I find a pattern that I really love I, I tend to go back to it like it's an old friend but sometimes we do want a little bit of novelty I just think, where possible, reuse your pattern. If you follow that calculation of cost per wear for an item of clothing, you can do the same thing with your pattern. So I know a pattern that I particularly love is the Nina Lee London Bloomsbury blouse. And I've made a few of those and I've also adapted it into a dress. So the price of that pattern diminishes every time that I make it. Reusing your patterns is a cost-effective way of being sensible with your pennies. Number five for budget-friendly sewing is to repurpose, to flip, to upcycle and so on. If you have things that you've made that maybe you don't wear anymore, can you turn them into something else? Way back you may have spent the money on that fabric, so repurposing the item into something else is you know 
really really good even if it's you know just for say you want to do patchwork or you want to make some small accessories or line things and so on then that's a really good way of keeping your budget down likewise using old maybe sheets or duvet covers or curtains those are really really good sources of, of fabric that again ties in with number one which was charity shops you know if you see nice fabrics that are duvet covers absolutely no reason why you can't use those to make clothing really really cost effective way of adding to your fabrics and being sustainable and keeping your budget down and finally i have a bonus tip which is planning so i am in no way organized or disciplined enough to do this but if you for example do something like your make nine and you know that through the year you want to make very specific patterns for specific occasions you can keep an eye on those patterns and when they go on sale you can buy them if they go on sale and similarly with fabrics so if you're really organized and you plan and you just keep a, a lookout you can buy patterns that you'd buy anyway slightly cheaper and fabrics that you've been lusting after because we do if we're fabric addicts so you can add to your sewing resources in a more budget friendly way however having said that i usually can't wait for those moments when the item that i want is on sale i am a little bit too impulsive for that i hope you've enjoyed my top five tips for sewing on a budget and what are your top tips what are your ideas you know please do share them and you know let me know because I'm you know I, I would love to know thank you for taking the time today to spend some time with me I hope you've got something from today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time take care and happy sewing my lovelies bye <laughs>